Hi everyone! I know that it's a little bit early and not quite halfway through September but I thought seeing as it's the weekend I should film my part one of my September wrap up uh, so you can see the, the books that I've read so far in the month and then we'll get another one at the end of the month which again might be slightly early just because of where the weekends fall in September. I'm now working full time so this is when I have light and also when I have time to film and the energy to film but I've still managed to get quite a bit read I have an hour commute each way so I think I'm going to do an, another whole video on commuting and kind of reading on the commute. The first book that I read in September was When Women Were Warriors. This is by Catherine M. Wilson and is a self-published book. I don't think I've ever read a self-published book before. I was recommended this by Nicole from Wolf's Whistle. It's free on Amazon. I don't like reading on a on a screen and I don't have a Kindle. I would just read Kindle books sometimes on my phone but I don't especially like doing that. But if you get the free Kindle version then you can buy the audiobook for a couple of pounds. That is what I did, I listened to the audiobook. I must say that the narration was a bit shaky in places but that's the nice thing about listening to audiobooks sped up is it kind of irons out those weird pauses. This is a, a fantasy book but it's not kind of your typical fantasy book. It's set in this matriarchal society which is so wonderful. It's so refreshing to see this because usually in fantasy books, I mean not that I've read a lot, a lot of fantasy, but usually it's very patriarchal, there are very strong gender roles and women are sometimes few and far between. So this was just great and I absolutely loved that about this. There are a couple of times when male characters appear and it's kind of like, oh, what are you doing here? And it's a bit surprising. So yeah, I really loved that aspect of it. There are also some lesbian romances. I don't know, I was kind of expecting that it was going to be a bit more explicit than it was and it was quite tame because I've read some reviews of this on Goodreads and most people's complaint is that there are lesbian themes. It baffles me how many homophobic people there are in the world. I gave it three stars. Now what I didn't like about it was the writing at times. Now in some places the writing was okay, but I think what this book really needed was the hand of a really good editor. There were times when phrases or sentences were repeated where it didn't really make sense for them to be, and I just think that it, the whole thing just could have been tightened up. The other thing is that it's very slow paced, not that much happens. It's basically about this society and there's a young woman who comes in to be a companion, a kind of assistant to one of the older women and she is an outsider in this tribe. Actually both of them are outsiders but there are connections between the families. It's kind of more to do with the politics and family relations and just the relationships in general. Obviously I could talk about this quite a lot but I would say that it's worth picking up because it's free for starters and if you want the audiobook it's very very cheap and it surprises me actually that this hasn't been picked up by a publisher because I mean with a bit of tightening up I think this could have been a really successful novel and there are two more in the series as well I think it set itself up quite well for a sequel unfortunately the second two are not available on audiobooks so I don't think I'll be picking them up at this stage so the next novel is one that I've been wanting to read for ages but I haven't read it because I hadn't read Mrs Dalloway and now I have read the Mrs Dalloway so this is The Hours by Michael Cunningham I don't have words for how great this is it follows three women who are all in some way affected by the story of Mrs Dalloway. One being Virginia Woolf, another being a woman in the 1940s and another being a more sort of present day story. It's beautiful in how it explores the inner lives of these women. It's quite quiet, quite slow, but there are some things that happen that really surprised me that I did not see coming at all. It's not heavily plot driven but oh, it's so good and if you're a fan of Virginia Woolf or if you just like beautiful writing, it's gorgeous and please, please read it, please read it. This was definitely a five star read for me. The next two books were also five star reads and this makes me so excited because, okay, basically Mercedes and Caitlin have been going on at me to read Robin Hobb. So I picked up the Life Ship Traders books and I've read this month consecutively the first and the second and I've now got the third and I can't wait to get my hands on it and just devour it because oh these books <laughs> they're 
so, they're so great. I'm, I'm really loving getting back into fantasy. I decided to start with live ships on Caitlin and Mercedes' recommendation. They said that the live ships are much better written, uh, have much better character development, and I agree that the, the character development is just fantastic and the characters are so very vivid and real. The way things are going I think I will definitely go back and read her first trilogy which is the Farseer trilogy and then I will go on and read the rest of her books, everything that she writes and this is so exciting. The characters are really what make this. I felt very invested in all of the characters and I feel very invested in them so far. I'm still going with the trilogy. You will hear my thoughts on the trilogy as a whole when I finish them, which will be this month, I am certain. The final book that I read so far in September and I actually finished this last night is Pray to Violet by Christopher Isherwood. So I read most of it last night because it's it's very short. It's in this beautiful, beautiful edition. Um, I have a few of these actually. The, Isherwood editions. Um, these are by Farah, Strauss and Giroux. What I love about these covers is that you don't really notice the, the subtler details to start with. So here you think, oh nice sort of floral pattern, and then you notice that there are these film reels in there. There are also aeroplanes, which I did not see until after I had finished the book actually. Um, because they're, they're very, they're this very dark purple and they hardly show up against the black. But um, this is set just before World War II, so that's where that comes into it. It is about a man called Christopher Isherwood, and <laughs> Isherwood often does this. Actually, most of his books, I think, have a protagonist called Christopher Isherwood. This is fictional, though. So Christopher, in this book, gets recruited to write the screenplay of a film which is called Pray to Violet. Not all that much happens in it. It's quite quiet. Um, it's beautifully written. Christopher Isherwood, but it has a lot of this pre-war tension in it, uh, like the Berlin stories do, except this is set in London. The director of the film, though, is Austrian, and so it's a lot to do with the tensions between Austria and Germany, and that becomes more apparent as the book progresses. I was reading this and thinking it was a bit ho-hum, that it was kind of a three-star book, but then I got to this passage near the end, and it's just this beautiful reflection on life and what it means to continue living. I think you probably have to read it in the context of the book, so I won't read you it, it's also quite a long passage, but it just really hit me last night. I thought, oh, no, this has to be a, a four-star book. So just that one passage really bumped it up, that star rating, and I think that's what Isherwood does really well, is beautiful, beautiful prose, and just these moments of reflection that make you really consider life and art. So I definitely do recommend picking up some Isherwood. This is definitely not my favourite. Um, Goodbye to Berlin and A Single Man are probably the best places to start with his work. I've got one of his autobiographies to read next so I'm quite looking forward to that one. So there we are, those are the books that I've read so far this month. Um, if you have read any of these do let me know in the comments. Particularly if you've read When Women Were Warriors or if you think you'd like to pick it up, I'd love to chat about that one. Yeah, that was only five books and I've still managed to go on and on about them, but that's why I split up my wrap-ups. I imagine there will be a few more books in my next wrap-up because I've got quite a few things on the go at the moment. As always, thank you so much for watching. I am still also looking for questions for my Q&A video, which I will be filming probably next weekend. So if you have anything that you want to ask me as well, because you're otherwise, then do leave those in the comments. Thanks for watching everyone, and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye.